Hello, good evening, happy Sabbath, and welcome everyone to yet another special Sabbath, another special Friday to our Shabbat Shalom service today. We trust and hope that you've had a very wonderful week. Those of us on campus, in our classes, in our lectures, everything went well. And our friends also watching us from far. We've also had a very good week in all your activities that you had. Today is yet another day for us. As we already know, this semester, we will be talking about values throughout the, uh, the semester in our Shabbat Shalom, our meeting under the word also service. And today we have a sp another wonderful topic to discuss. And we have a special uh, person to present and also lead us in today's discussion. So today's service and also all today's topic is conflict of values, conflict of values. And I hope by the end of our program today, in our discussion today, we have something to know about the conflicts that we face in our values. So before we start, I'll invite my brother Valerie to lead us in our opening prayer. Okay, let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this moment. Now we are about to start with this program. Be read us, bless us, and may this program glorify your name we pray you in the name of jesus the one and only son amen amen so i like now to introduce our special guest today that is roland fisher and um, he is the uh, president of our university and uh, he was a pastor uh, many years, and is uh, he specialized on the practical way of uh, pastoring. And uh, now, uh, in his time of studying, uh, in his time of pastoring, he uh, make his doctor, and he write a special. Uh, yeah, your doctor uh, title. Can you tell maybe your uh, what? about what you have written by your doctor? Well, my dissertation was basically on the Sabbath school. And I figured out that the Sabbath school is the oldest educational institution of our Seventh-day Adventist church. It was founded before our church started as a, as a body of as an institution. So and I wanted to figure out how education to adults is presented in, in the Sabbath school. Yes. Yeah, so then in our time of uh, university so everyone is adult here to study and uh, so you're in the right subject to and especially we have many uh, students who studied even they work so uh, i think that is a good point to know about it and how it works so you are a father from three children, and you are a grandpa of eight children. So uh, I think you have a lot of experience even in education of children <laughs> and uh, family in the practical way. So um, what I see is that you are a person who is very um, loyal, not only to the to the church. You are a very um, a person who is um, continue your way. Uh, I don't know how to explain it really in English, uh, but uh, I think you are on the right position because you bring many people together under one point and uh, you have the the right uh, personality to do this and uh, today you you have yeah i think in this work you have also many uh, experience how values can come in a conflict 
And uh, so not only in a family part, also in a work. And uh, we like to listen to you now in your uh, presentation. Thank you for this. Thank you, Dietmar, for your introduction. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, and all of those who are watching and, and listening, welcome to Friedens of Adventist University and to Shabbat Shalom on our topic uh, tonight, conflict of values, as it was mentioned already. Well, this is part of a series on the theme of values. And whoever participated last week, you know that Dr. Kweku talked about uh, values, where they come from, what they mean to us. So we kind of continue this topic. Now, what is conflict of values? Simply speaking, we have two terms conflict and values. So we might say, when two values are in conflict with each other and cannot both be realized, or when the realization of one value jeopardizes the realization of the other one. And also Kweku pointed to that last week. Now we know, and it's very obvious, that people have different values. Why? Well, because their education is different, their socialization in the society where they were brought up had an impact on their value system. There is uh, the nation, the country, the culture that um, has an influence on, on our values, the world view, which is, of course, also very much influenced by religion. And we have different needs that lead to different values. So um, it is uh, very obvious that a conflict of value can arise. Number one, conflict can arise between two persons or between two groups. Now, a simple example. Imagine you are an assistant or a secretary to a boss of a company. And the boss comes into your office and, and tells you, when somebody calls in on the phone, please tell him that I'm not here. Now, this may be a conflict of values because you want to be honest and uh, truthful, whereas your boss doesn't want to be disturbed or whatever. Now, how can you solve that problem? Well, let's assume somebody calls and you say, the boss just told me to say that he's not here. Well, I'm choking a little bit, you see. But yeah, what, what, could, what can you do? Or let's take an example that is between two groups and it's really relevant in our times. As you know, there are a lot of anti-corona demonstrations in our country and elsewhere. And it seems that there are different values clashing. I'm not talking about violence, but suppose there are people who want to demonstrate for the values of freedom, of self-determination. And on the other side, there's the state and uh, the values of uh, protection of life and health or of common good. Now, who is right? How can this conflict be solved? But a conflict of values not only arises between two persons or two groups, but can also come up within myself. Now, if there is a situation where two values I hold are in conflict to each other, which means I cannot do according to both, I cannot realize both of them, this may lead to an ethical dilemma and a very Realistic and sad example in the history of our country was, of course, when in the times of the Nazi regime, there were some brave people hiding Jews in their apartment. And the Gestapo, the secret police, knocks at the door and asks, is there any Jew hidden in your apartment? What are you doing? Do you want to be honest and say yes? 
or do you want to protect life and decide to lie? Conflict of values in myself. Well, of course, this is a very extreme example and obviously not every day, but um, let's come a little bit closer to our situation. Assume you are working in a company and you have the Sabbath free, but your boss comes and says to you, I want you to work just one Sabbath because we have a shortage of workers. We cannot run our business. We desperately need you to be there. Now there's a conflict in yourself. You want to be faithful and respect the Sabbath. And at the same time, maybe you want to helpful to be helpful to your boss and to your colleagues. What can you do? Now, brothers and sisters, let's look into the Bible. Are there some conflicts also there? And if so, does the Bible present some answers and solutions? When we look into the New Testament, in the times of the apostles, there was a conflict between the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians. And this was, I believe, a conflict of values as well, because the Jewish Christians want to be in conformity with the Mosaic law. They want to keep on with purity and piety. And on the other side, the Gentile Christians hold uh, held the uh, values of equality, of fellowship, of universality, and of integration. And this, of course, epitomizes in circumcision. For one side, it was a fulfillment of the Mosaic law, and for the others, it was um, equality that goes above this circumcision case. And there was also a conflict between two persons, between Peter and Paul. This was reported in Galatians chapter 2. And um, we know Peter um, shunned the fellowship with the Gentiles um, on, a, on a table, eating not with them, because he wanted to side with the values of the Jews, whereas Paul opposed him and wanted to side with the values of the Gentiles. Now, is there a solution to that? We know from the Bible where how that problem was solved at that time. It was solved in favor of the Gentiles and for inclusion, and it was against circumcision and separation. Now, why? We see in this conflict of values, they decided that one value is above the other. So the value of the gospel, like inclusion, community, equality, and all of that, has been considered higher than the conflicting values of purity and separation. So we may say a solution to a conflict of values can be found if we have a hierarchy of values. I think we need a hierarchy of values, and I'm pretty sure that all of us have that, which means not all of our values we hold are on the same level, but there are some that are higher and more important, whereas others are less important. And this seemed to be the case in that issue between Jewish and Gentile Christians. There's another example in the New Testament. Let's go to the Church of Rome. And we read in the epistle to the Romans in chapter 14 and 15 about the conflict of values in that church. It was about issues like food, vegetarian or meat. It was about the issue of holidays, keeping all of them holy or not. What was the solution in that case? Well, in this case, it was not that one of the conflicting values was above the other one. But in this case, there was a third, a higher value above all of them. And we can read that in chapter 15, Romans 15, verse 7, 
where Paul says, accept one another just as Christ accepted you. So above these conflicting values, there was a higher one, and that is acceptance. That is brotherly and sisterly love. That is care for one another. And of course, in our Christian faith, the highest value we have is love for God and love for our neighbors. Just as Jesus said in um, the uh, Gospel to, uh, of Matthew, chapter 22, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I think we can see two principles or two solutions in the Bible to a conflicting value system. There's, number one, a hierarchy of values where one may be above the other, and there is one highest value in our Christian belief system, and this is love to God and to our neighbors. Now, dear friends, whenever we come in a situation where values are conflicting, we may turn to the Bible, we may want to pray, and we may want to remember that there are solutions pointed out in the Bible like hierarchy of values and one highest value above all. Love to God and to your neighbors. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Roland, for this uh, wonderful advice and insight on how to deal with this kind of conflict. Um, I would like to ask a question now. Um, actually, is it bad to compromise on some of our values as Christians in order to make friend and win soul for Jesus, for Christ? Is it actually a, a bad thing, for instance, to uh, get to be with people who are completely different, living a life which is different from our lifestyle, just because we want to be friend with them, we want them to know Christ. So can we compromise on some of our values? Well, thank you for the question. That's very interesting and very relevant, of course. Um, to compromise the values seems uh, to be, of course, negative. I would, I would consider this to be a, a conflict of values. And in this case, it may be helpful to figure out if there is a higher value uh, than, for example, you mentioned lifestyle issues, you know. So if we consider to win a person for Christ to be a higher value, then maybe, you know, exercising a certain lifestyle, this may be um, a choice, um, you know, in this case, to, to win that person. And if I point uh, your attention to what Paul was saying, and he, you know, the famous saying where he said, I, 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 I become strong with a strong, and I become weak with a weak, and I become a law keeper with the law keepers, and I become uh, somebody who is not under the law with those, you know, in order to win somebody to Christ. So it seems that Paul was willing to, to you know, to put, put certain values below and to, to put the value of saving people for Christ above. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much for the presentation, Professor. Um, uh, we like it uh, and we learned a lot. But I have a question regarding the conflict of values. For example, in a personal uh, scheme, if I have my values were conflicting, can that be seen positively? If yes, in what ways? It can conflict of value can can be positive. Can can conflict of values be positive? 
like if I, for example, I started in 2010, I had a certain value and I realized that in 2015, I have a new value that is conflicting to, it, can that be a positive thing? Um, thank you for the question, that's very interesting. Um, first of all, very generally speaking, a conflict, whatever it may be, if it is a conflict of values or a conflict of interests or of conflict between two persons or whatever, always can have positive aspects because it brings something on the surface which causes us to deal with and to find solutions for that where what uh, otherwise would have been you know under the carpet as we say so if if i if i uh, realize a conflict of values and i i think we cannot escape a situation where it comes to a conflict of values i mean that's part of everyday life so if we come in a situation like that the positive thing may be that we are caused to really rethink our values and in our case, as Christians, we will turn to the Bible, we will turn to Christ and to God in prayer, and we will maybe search the scriptures for, for answers, uh, which may be helpful in that, in that particular situation. So I think a conflict of values is a chance to grow and to develop my, my skills, my, my value system, and basically also my relationship to, to God and to, to my fellow men. Thank you very much again. Uh, the final question is about conflict in a family. If we, if we respect the hierarchy of value, for example, in a family where the husband and the wife, they have a conflict of values, but all of them, they refer to love. They said, all of them, they, they said, okay, it's out of love. They understand in the, in the top of all these values is love. They all understand that, but still their values are conflicting. How can that be approached? Well, in, in these cases, let your wife decide. No, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yes. Of course, that's a very practical question and that, uh, that often appears. Um, You know, when, when it comes to, to the hierarchy of values, there may be situations where there are really very high values at stake. This is not an everyday situation, I believe. This may be some exceptions where we really have to, to talk very intensively and to pray and to, to, to discuss to find, to find a common solution. But on a, on a more everyday level, you know, there may be values at stake who are of, of, lower, um, of, of lower importance for us. And in these cases, I think, in these cases, I think uh, sometimes compromises uh, can, you know, can, can be a practical solution, which does not mean that we, we jeopardize or we, we shun those, those values, but we, we find practical solutions um, where you say, uh, today it's, it's, it's you know, coming too close to your opinion and tomorrow it's coming closer to mine. So that's, that's more on, a, on an everyday level, you see. But if, it, if it's really uh, important and, and, and high values at stake, um, I, I, yeah, I, 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 can, I can see no other solution than really discuss hard. And as, it, as you mentioned, if, if the highest value is love and love is really exercised by the this uh, couple or who it is i think they they will be able to find find a way thank you very much that was the final question thank you thank you thank you it was a pleasure okay i would also like to uh, thank you for uh, these uh, insightful words of wisdom roland and uh, for these questions and answers as we are um uh, as we have listened now so thank you very much um next shabbat shalom we will also continue with the topic of value and uh, for the end i just want to remind everybody for um our schedule tomorrow uh, for the worship we have a german worship 
uh, at uh, excuse me at 10 a.m. Uh, with Gloria Herman. Uh, it, it, this is participant from One Year for Jesus program that that is running uh, here in Germany. Very interesting. And also we have um, at 11.30 we have uh, English worship service and a uh, message from the Word of God will share with us Antonia Koch and Eileen Capiti. Uh, so it's, they are also participants from One Year for Jesus. So I'm really uh, I can't wait to uh, to listen for for that. Also, we have a discussion Sabbath school at 10:30 a.m. Um, on Zoom, uh, English Sabbath school. Uh, so yeah, before we uh, end today, Shabbat Shalom. I would invite Otec Abla to pray with us for the end. Let's have a word of prayer. Our most gracious and everlasting Father, we want to thank you so much for this moment and for all the things that we've shared here. Father, we want to pray and ask you to be with us, Lord, to give us your, your spirit so that we'll be able to stand firm to our values. Thank you, Lord, because uh, you've listened to our prayers. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we've prayed. Amen. Amen.